Hi. It's Mayo. We're back. I'm back. Um, we're going to do some sumi techniques today with this bamboo brush. I'm going to hold it up for you. That's all we need. It's going to be black ink. We're going to start with a branch. And it's quick tips on art. Remember, it's raw art by Mayo. So, we're going to bring a branch. Now, when you think of a composition, you should take your composition and start with a dominant rectangle and divide it to smaller rectangles. Borrow it from a tree, one reference, a mountain from another, perhaps a cloud form, still another, and build on golden means. Now, you will find that's most successful with compositions. And it does have a scientific basis. So, And the wise artist always avoids equalized distributions of space. So, we're going to bring in... We're going to hold it low, and we're going to bring a branch like this. And I'm going to dip it in the water again, and I'm going to bring my crab down, and bring the second part of the branch in, like this, and split it. These are important. They direct the viewer that's interested in your work to where you want them to be following. So here we have this beautiful branch. So I think we're going to make it a cherry blossom tree. And I might even do a V here and here to point us in, as you can see. This is a good start. So I think if we make it a cherry blossom tree, we have five. So I'm going to put one blossom here, and we have five. So do your brush here. Hold your crab. We have five leaves and a cherry blossom. And they go down. Pull your bead in. There's one cherry blossom. Let's make another one. We can go in front of the branch too. Here's another cherry blossom. Remember, five. There's another one. Okay. And then we're going to do one that's here just opening up. Maybe a bud. And then we're going to do one here, point another triangle in, as you see. And this one is going to be folded half over. So we're going to make it like this. One, two, three, four, five, and in the middle, a little circle. So there we have some cherry blossoms in black and white. We have some buds. We can even have a few berries. See the berries? There you go. Now, we're going to put in a beautiful bird. Probably a cap, a black cap mountain chickadee. So we're going to put them up here first. A black chap. And we're going to just put a tiny beak pointing up like that. And then we're going to put a second part here and his breast. And we're going to come over here. We're going to start it here. Now he's going to be sitting on the branch. So we're going to see his little tail underneath, like that. There you go. Yeah. You do another one there. And then we're going to bring this down and put this in front because he's turning sideways. Like this. And then we're just going to take this brush and do a side wing because he's turning his head. So we're going to do a side wing. We're going to do, it's always good to count, back of the branch. One, two, three, four, back of the branch. I'm going to come down here a little bit, and I'm going to bring his wing here. And there's his other side of his wing. And I'm going to move that water bead over, because I just love that by the branch. And just a tiny eye, just a dot. For the eye. So there we go. We have our black cap mountain chickadee today in this lesson. See how you can move the bead around? Um, you can keep it wet. And then we're just going to put a little bit here. A few on his, just a few marks here. All right. And I'll probably bring down another branch here. So we have another V pointing in. I like that. And we're going to put two looking up at him. So I am going to come up here. I'm going to come down. Keep it wet. We're going to just go like this.
for the back of this little mountain chickadee. Maybe this is a smaller one, a young baby here too. And we'll probably put it here. And then his wing. I'm sorry, not his wing, his tail. Those are his tail feathers, silly goose. So we're going to have a little bit here, and that's where he's hanging on. And then we're going to put, uh, this is going to be the top. As long as you keep this wet, the bead with your Sumi painting, you should be perfect. And let's make him a little bigger. He is in the foreground, so he's going to be, and I just keep this bead moving. See how I can keep this bead moving? As long as the watercolor is wet, we can do it like that, too. And pull it up. Pull up your beads. See how I'm pulling it up? Make it smooth. Now, I'm just going to give him a cap in between. So this is how I'm going to do his head here. Like this. Maybe bring this. As long as you keep that bead wet, you can just keep moving that bamboo tip like that. I like that. Then we're going to put his little beak looking up. So there he is. He's looking up at his friend. Now we can, because it's still wet, we can widen that bead too. And we can put in a tail like that. So now we have two. Then we can put one here. I think in this composition, I'll put one here below. Drop your index finger and your thumb for detail. And this is our, this is where, so we're going to put maybe a blossom here, a cherry blossom here, one, two, three, four, and five. We'll put it like that. And in the middle. So we have another little cherry blossom here, and we can have one coming off of here. One, two, three, four, five. Fold it up, dip again, and we'll put a little circle in here and make it like that. It's another cherry blossom. And we'll have a little bud here and a bead here, cherry tree. Maybe a cherry is going to be growing here. I love the way that's spread here, see. Then we're going to do one more bird. And he's going to be here looking at his friend on the other side. Another black cat mountain chickadee with a little beak like that, a tiny eye. And then we're going to put a side wing in sideways and then a little tail we always have can't forget his tail and then down in here so he's turning sideways and he's holding on so and long as we keep that bead wet with our black ink you can do anything a little line here but if you put the water in there it'll just spread out see so there we have a composition um, we could put a little bead here and a little blossom here. So let's put a big cherry blossom here and we'll put one here. And then we'll put some of those little beads, berries, whatever you want to call them. They're in here. Oh, and then beautiful leaves. I just love the leaves. So let's put a few leaves in. We can put one here. We can put a leaf here. We can put one here and here. I'm going to get some juice on there again. So we'll put one here, beautiful leaf. We put one there and there. Let's put a couple up in here. One here. And we can put one here. I like that split. And we have a little bead in there. A little, yeah, beautiful. Here. Not too complicated. I don't want it too messy. And then we'll just put a darker shade in here on this little black cat. We'll bring down that water bead. See how I can bring it down with the tip of that brush. Yep. Bring it down in here. Maybe a little bit more on his tail. He's turned his head sideways here. So we'll put it like that. Uh, I think maybe. I don't want to leave here. And we're just going to make that. 
Um, I like the way these look here, so we're just going to put a little bit in the middle and then spread it out. Leave that white. If you have that beautiful white, that's why we do watercolors and this kind of technique because the circle's in the middle and the white's on the outside and that one's pointing like that. So there we go. You can always pick it up, so watch. Take your brush, drop that crab down, and you can run it in, even, even in between, see? Little bead there, little leaf there. Maybe put a leaf here, leaf here. And the fun part is, <coughs> like I showed you before, you can take a paper towel and you can stamp it and pull up. See, and then we can get that little outline on the side. So there we have another one. And here too, just pull that bead up see? like that. I might even make this guy a little darker in here and bring it down. And then a little darker in here. Leave that little spot. I like that light spot in the middle. It's a highlight. And you can go back with that tip and even make his tail a little darker here. Right behind the branch, see? And that gives it a little bit more contrast. Contrast is important too. We talk about contrast. I like that one. Here, here we waited for a second. We can just run another pass, make them a little rounder. Pull that bead down. And then here, I'm just gonna put a little talon and then his a little bit more on his tail here. I like that, that little bit there. And the leaf, we'll just do half of it and leave the highlight in the middle, like that. We can run this branch down and make it darker, but you have to be careful. There you go. So we pretty much have our tree. I'm gonna make it darker in here for contrast and darker in here on the edge. Where's our light source? Probably coming from the left to the right. You can see how everything is a little, we can even do in here. One more swipe on this initial mountain chickadee. And I would leave it like that. I would just run it like that. I don't mind that. You just swipe that brush dry and take this B. Don't run too many passes. Now um, I'm gonna put in writing little birds and this is in Japanese and I think I'm going to put my little birds we did lose his head a little bit here so let's put his little cap back in here and maybe in here a little perfect and even in here I don't mind it here so I'm just going to skip there you go and we can even make it darker here I'll go in with more ink on this one and just bring him in like that with a little bit bigger, a darker value. It's called a value. We're just using black today because the Sumi painters use black a lot. And we're going to stop it here. Just let that sit for a second. Um, then I'm going to put in little birds in Japanese. I'm going to put it up here. So I'm going to drop this crab down if you can see. And it's... One stroke, two stroke, like that, like that. And we're gonna drop it down. We're gonna do a side stroke, across, down, halfway, in the middle. This one goes like this. And then we have this little V here. So it goes doot, doot, doot. Actually, it should go down one more. And then a thicker line here and up like that. And that, so I'm going to put down up here, I'm going to put little birds. And we know they're black cap chickadees. So, um, 
we could run this up a little bit before we stop for the day. As long as that bead, that water bead is wet, you can keep carrying it around. Drop your crab down. I call it your crab, but it's your pincher, your index, and your um, thumb. We'll just make this part a little darker here. In between, maybe here. And um, I do like a darker value maybe on the chickadee here. So we're just going to run it up here like that. I like that. If we use less water, it will start drying now. And maybe a berry. Uh, let's see. Think of your composition. I think we're going to leave it. I think it's a pretty good. We got our V's. We got our basic large rectangle and a smaller one. We had this little mountain chickadee, black cat mountain chickadee here with his beak and his tail. I like that tail. Now this branch is shading him. And here we could turn him sideways. You can always turn your pieces sideways or upside down. That helps you see things different and negative. Space is important to watch for. I'm going to darken him up a little bit here. I hope it isn't a mistake, but I do like that contrast. So um, if you turn things upside down, one of my students draws better upside down. And uh, it's because we see things differently. And it shuts down the left side that's symbolic, that thinks of every, it thinks it knows it all, the left hemisphere of the brain. It, it's a know-it-all, but it just sees things symbolically, not as they really are. So turning things upside down will open up that right side of that brain. And, you know, remember, I love it when we move it. You can move the water by moving your page. But I think I have a nice feeling on this bird, so I'm going to leave it. I like that round feeling on him. So here we have our little birds. We can come in here and do a little more for our cherry blossom and that one. And so we have our little birds and it's in Japanese. So thank you for watching. Um, again, just quick tips on art, raw art by Mayo. Today we just did a little bit of a sumi technique, black ink and little black cat chickadees on a large branch that is actually a um, cherry blossom. So in here, I'm just going to shade it. See, as long as you keep that bead wet, that water bead, look at how beautifully you can shade that. And I can push it up in here too and push it down. See, nice round feeling on that bird. And even in here. So we'll sign off today. Thank you for watching once again. Sponsor me and thumbs up. Have a good day. Bye.